Good morning, everybody. This is Chelsea from Cottontail Farm. I am having to do things a little differently this morning because we have a massive rain thunderstorm happening right when I'm supposed to be live. So I this is a pre-recorded video. I got it up extra early so I could do this now. Uh, totally unexpected. So I'm recording now and posting it on my Facebook page and Wafa is going to share it as a watch party. So if you're watching me, you found me. Uh, I'm sorry this way has to go. Our internet is actually pretty good, except um, when it storms because the router has to connect to, you know, the fiber internet. But, so we're just going to go with it, see how, see how it all pans out. Anyway, uh, I am Cottontail Farm. I am Project Bags, as you can see, and also Wood Tools. Uh, all my purchasing can be done through my Etsy shop, which is right down here. It's cottontailfarmva.etsy.com. Uh, you can check out with Etsy without having an Etsy account. So you can check out as a guest. It's simple as any credit or debit card, and I believe you can use PayPal as well. So that's where all my bags are. Uh, I do it that way because most of the bags are individual. There's only one of them. The tools, there are plenty of but the bags are each individual. So I don't have multiples, so running a sale through comments and running Etsy at the same time can get a little complicated. So go there, check that out. You can also follow me on uh, my Facebook page, which is Cottontail Farm VA, or Instagram, which is also Cottontail VA, to stay up to date with um, new project bag updates and any new tools I might make. All of that will be posted there pretty fre frequently. So to get started, thank you to all the WAFA behind the scenes members. Uh, they do a really great job every month hosting us, all us vendors from all over the country, which is so much fun that we can all be brought to your living rooms no matter where you are. So with that, uh, we'll start with project bags. I tend to go through my sizes first, uh, just so that you can see them kind of up close and personal versus looking on an Etsy page. Um, you can see their sizes and shapes and how they're made versus a, a flat picture. So the sizes I make uh, tend to go from small to large. And my first one that I have, which is the smallest one, is a little four and a half inch square Notion pouch. Uh, it has a little lobster clasp here. These are $8. And there are a whole bunch of different fabrics in the shop. Some of them, the fronts are different than the backs. They are zippered and on the inside it's white. So these are eight and they're not super um, interfaced, they're real um, squishable. So they're just perfect for your little notions, uh, stitch markers, that kind of thing. So that's the first one. Uh, let's see. The second size I have in like a tiny notion pouch is a little triangle bag. Uh, these range from about five inches, five by four, some are a little bigger, some are a little smaller, but all within a half inch, and all their descriptions will have their sizes in the Etsy description, as well as more close-up pictures. These are also zippered, white on the inside. Plenty of room in here. Um, you can get a, quite a bit of stuff in this. Uh, you wouldn't think so, but you really can. And then they have a little ribbon to hang from. These are 10. The last no, that's not true. Uh, the second, second to last notion size I have are flat pencil bag type. Some of these are different on the front and the back. They are zippered. These are 12. White on the inside as well. And these are really great for um, DPN needles. They fit really well in here. The, I guess it would be the 8 inch size ones. Uh, they fit in here really well, but not not like your whole Notions kit. So if you need like a smaller Notions kit to, to slip into a bag you're taking with you, these are a really great size. Uh, just kind of an on-the-go little kit. The main Notion size I use are these. Still zippered, but they are gusseted on the bottom. So they have quite a bit more room. This, this kit, these can hold all of your notions. Uh, some people say they can get a one like sock, sock weight yarn in here. It's a tight squeeze, but you can do it. 
Nothing, nothing heavier than a sock weight yarn would fit in here though. Um, you could get like that and maybe one start of a sock project in there. They all come with a zipper pull that has cotton on that. My little sheep guy, his name is Cotton. Uh, and I started making project bags. I Not first. That's not how I started my business. I started when we, we had sheep and we were making art bats. And by we, I mean me and my mom. Uh, we do shows together, festivals together. She's Gypsy Mountain Farm. And if you saw us at the very beginning, uh, I had no bags. No tools, no bags. It was art bats and like little notions, little acorns and everything. Um, I started doing the bags when I restarted knitting, which I didn't start until my son decided he wanted a sweater and I couldn't find anyone to make him a sweater. So I learned how to do it. And then I also quickly learned that I wanted to find a project bag that I liked. So I thought, why not? I have a sewing machine. So I started making bags. Uh, and this was the first size I made was this little notion size. Mostly because I wasn't sure, I had not sewn in a very long time. So I wasn't sure if I was gonna mess up my fabric. I didn't wanna ruin anything. So I made something small and this size has stuck around since then. So this notion size is 15. They have a little um, D-ring on this side so that you can clip them to a larger bag or put a handle of your own on them. So those are the notion sizes. And as you can see from behind me, um, all the bags are, have gotten kind of, not out of control, I would say, but now I make them in every shape and size. There's just another little one. It's sheep. And just to show you a different fabric, because sometimes the colors blow out. The next size up is a, what I call a sock or a small size. Let me move these out of the way. These are 25 and they are constructed the same, the same squishy um, interfacing. They are white or off-white on the inside. And I do that after a couple requests when I did first start that um, patterns on the inside can be a little bit hard to find your notions on the inside. So all of them are white or off-white depending on what fabric is um, available currently. Uh, white fabric has been a little tricky to find. So these are the notion, or sorry, early, haven't had my coffee yet. These are the sock size, these are 25. They also come with a matching handle on them that you can remove to either use for something else or change out maybe your favorite one. But those are removable. You also can um, clip your stitch markers onto this lobster claw and then they're right there where you can find them. Zippered, the zipper tabs are enclosed. They are top stitched here and on the inside so that you don't catch your um, lining into your zipper. So those are the sock hat, maybe beginning of a, a cowl can fit in those. And they, all sorts of fabrics, these are more sheep. Since it's, you know, more sheep the better. Size after that is what I would call a shawl size medium size these are 35 made exactly the same way as the sock size same detachable handles same d-ring also has a zipper pull with cotton on it encased zipper tabs and top stitched only difference between these are besides the size is these have a pocket on the inside uh, just big enough for like your your swatch or like a, um, a needle gauge those are on the inside of that, also in white. These are 35. And with most of my fabrics, I don't tend to repeat them. So if there's one you see, snag it, because they tend not to come back. I do have a couple drawstrings. And let me find the smallest one first. You know what, I don't know if I have one out. This one. It's the drawstrings on the site. This is the smallest. This would be comparable to like the sock, sock size zipper bags. These are 22. And these are more lightly interfaced than the zipper bags just because it makes them more squishy. So if you're doing a sock project, you can just squish this down into another bag. 
white on the inside, no pockets, carry handle, and then they pull, pull tight. So this is what I use for knitting socks, just because it's so squishy and you, I can stuff it into a bigger bag. These are 22, and a lot of these, some of them are different, uh, like the Notion bags, the, the front and the back might be different patterns. Just make sure you look through all the pictures on Etsy uh, on the off chance that um, they are different. I don't want you to be surprised when you get one home. Then we get to more serious size bags. This is my sweater bucket. These are 65. These stand up on their own, but they also have a drawstring top. And there's a couple behind me. There's this one over here. You can see it's standing up. You can get a lot of yarn in this one. Okay, when they're really full, they stand up empty. This one's totally empty. And they stand up really well, um, like by the side of your couch. Uh, this is the size I use for knitting sweaters, big like Stephen West shawls. This is what I use because you can fit upwards of six to seven skeins in the bottom of it, plus your project as it, as it gets full. I have never run out of room in this bag. The top is a drawstring, it has a toggle. The handles are fleece interface, so it's not gonna cut into your hand when it's really full and heavy. And there's plenty of room in there for your yarn, your project, and a like a notions kit. So these are actually pretty, pretty low in the shop right now. I need to do an update on them. I have a giant stack cut. So just if this is one you're looking like, like a size you would like and there's not one in the shop that you like, just wait maybe a week or two um, I'm going to update them pretty quickly, and those will be featured on my Instagram when I do have them ready. Now, if you are a large project, like giant husband worsted weight sweater, um, or a blanket, this is my blanket tote. They used to be named sweater totes or sweater buckets. I renamed them blanket buckets when I started making the smaller size. These are 85. They are constructed just the same. Let me try to get the bottom flat. Drawstring top. They're just much, much larger. And these also have two pockets on the inside. So because they're just a much bigger bag, I figured the pockets were a really good idea. So these are 85 and they hold a lot of yarn plus your project. And all the dimensions of them all are gonna be in their Etsy listing. But um, if you have any questions, feel free to message me, email me, find me on Facebook, and I'd be happy to show you better pictures or um, give you exact dimensions of a specific bag. But they all are about the same. So if you've noticed, before I move on to my little like notions bet, um, these guys, I have Halloween bags. I do not make many holiday bags. So these will be listed today, uh, probably by noon. I'm just waiting for it to get light outside. And this is it, this is all there is. Um, holiday bags, I tend not to make a lot of them just so that they're not hanging around all year. <laughs> so if you see a Halloween bag you like, snag it quickly. Uh, the new fabrics I have are um, this little steampunk guy. I'll just show you these quickly so you can see all of them. There's a little steampunk um, crows, cats, owls, and pumpkins. Okay, there's a couple of those. There are these owls in the shawl size and the notion size, or sorry, sock size. And there's only two of the notion size of pumpkins. And here's the pumpkin so you can see them up close. They're just really cute little funny faced pumpkins. I really like the steampunk animals. And then this size over here is a new size for me. Um, they are kind of an in-between between the blanket and sweater bucket. They are canvas bottomed, but they're still drawstring. They hold a lot. They hold quite a bit of yarn. I'm doing um, that garden knit along by Lisa Ross right now with mine. Inside is white, but they have pockets. 
Now the only downside is, is the Halloween bags are first. They were the first ones I made. They don't have pockets, uh, and that is in the Etsy listing. These are 50. Um, they just hold a really, they're really great shape, really great size, pretty sturdy because of the canvas and also the cotton webbing handles. Uh, these could take a, a lot of traveling and, and really wear well. So in those ones, there's this purple, a little critters and flamingos and a fox and a rabbit, all sorts of stuff on that one. There's a floral one. And some of them may look the same, like this one and the one above my head. Uh, but make sure you look at the Etsy pictures because sometimes the canvas is different. Or like this bird one. Uh, it has two different fabrics up top here before the canvas. And there's another bird one. Uh, here's one of the Halloween ones. And, and then there's like another bird one that's blue. So those are brand new in the shop. They're pretty um, pretty well stocked right now. Other bags I make, these are big ones right now. These are spinning wheel pockets. So these are really great for at your spinning wheel. Uh, just to hold like your um, spinning gauge, a little bottle of oil, uh, your orifice hook. But what's great about these is they snap, the handle snaps on one side so that you can snap it to anywhere on your spinning wheel you'd like without taking off your bobbin, without having to mess with any of that. So just cute little pockets. These are 15. There's a whole bunch of them in the shop right now. I really like making them because they're just so cute. Uh, you can also put like your keys in them, uh, chocolate, candy, you can put those in there. But there's a whole bunch. This one's a little woodland guy flamingos who doesn't need flamingos so those are 15 I also have them in cute little sheeps there's a whole bunch of sheeps you can tell I'm a huge fan of sheep fabric anytime there's sheep fabric it comes home with me organizers for those of you that keep your everything nice and tidy I have interchangeable cases these fit a five inch interchangeable needle set so there's the little, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's about six. Some of them have seven slots here for your needles to go in. And then there's a pocket in the back for your cords. So these are 28. Some are quilted, some are not. Like this one's quilted down the back. Just depends on how much of the fabric I had and what seemed to go together well. And they have a little pearl snap here. So once they're in there, um, they're not going to fall out. If you need a different size, if you have longer needles or shorter needles, I can custom make these. And if you can see, this is my fabric stash behind all these bags. There's plenty to work with. If there's a theme you're looking for, I'd be more than happy to um, send you some pictures of fabric. Then I have pattern pockets. These I have a hard time keeping in stock. There's only, I think there's only five in the shop right now but I restock these pretty frequently. So these are really great if you're not using Knit Companion or you know, you know you're going somewhere that doesn't have an internet connection, that if you're downloading a new pattern, or if you just wanna be technology free, which is what I do. I don't use Knit Companion. Um, I like doing this because it keeps my patterns clean and it keeps me from having to reprint them. So they're clear pockets. This is the clear here. You can just slip your eight and a half by 11 piece of paper inside and you can either lay it flat in front of you and read your pattern or it has two snaps, one here and one here. You can simply take it and snap these together and it will stand up. And as it stands up, if you want to use it, you can just flip to read your pattern. These are 30 and they fit in the bottom of the shawl size bags and up. So they fit really nicely down into the bottom and then they can snap close for easy transportation. Okay. Uh, I think this is the last sewn thing I have. Well, I have Wranglers, so I'll get to those in a minute. These are DPN or circular needle cozies. These are 
super useful if you're traveling with your um, knitting project because they hold your needles. These, there's two snaps. They hold your needles on the inside. So they're white on the inside. There's two snaps. And this is just an example. You can use these with flexi flips. You can use them with circular needles. You can use them with DPMs. But wherever your project is hanging out, you just kind of fold your needles up together. Uh, if it's circular, you just bring the two together. If it's DPNs, you just fold them like this. And you take them and just slide them up into your needle cozy and snap. Now, they're snug with your work hanging out, and they're not going to fall off when you shove them into your bag uh, or wherever you want to leave them. The cat's not going to take off with them. Kids aren't going to take off with them. But with circulars, so the DPNs will fit all the way up in the top. And the snaps are in far enough that it works with both sizes of DPNs. Uh, flexi flips work the same way. If you're using circular, your needles would be on the inside and then your cords would just hang out. So the cords would kind of hang out with your work in progress, but everything else would be up on the inside and secure with the snaps. These are nine and there's a whole, whole bunch of different fabrics on those. Another notion, which is super popular, I uh, have skein wranglers. My husband named these for me when I started making them. Make sure that's off. Yeah, it is. Skein wranglers are yarn cozies, uh, yarn bras, uh, ball bands, even called a bunch of different things. They are stretchy. So they're made out of knit or jersey fabric, and they stretch over your cake of yarn. So this is like a fingering, a light fingering cake and there is a little bit of room on it still and it stretches over this one's a little bit bigger and the way you work them these are eight if i forgot to mention that just stretch and put it over your cake and it's ready to go it keeps them clean it keeps them from unwinding on you uh, my cat loves to run away with my wool yarn uh, she just takes it everywhere this kind of keeps her from unraveling the entire thing you can pull from the outside or the inside. Uh, the first couple rounds, if you're using like a worsted weight cake, might be a little tight, but I tend to pull from the outside, So, and I've done it, and it works just great. Inside is super, super easy too. It just pulls from here, and this keeps your ball from like going wonky and collapsing on you. So there's a whole bunch of these in the shop. I tend to switch the fabrics out on these pretty often, but right now I have cats, little pink cats, there's turquoise arrows with flowers and the patterns um, placement will change on these just depending on where I cut them little uh, ladybugs and toadstools and acorns there's also one that matches this it's the acorns and squirrels it's adorable little zoo animals uh, and like I said there's a whole bunch of other fabrics in the shop those are eight dollars if you have a question on if they will fit your size cake, uh, just email me and I can test it. But I've stretched them over worsted weight yarn cakes before. So that brings us to uh, tools, which are these wooden things that I cut. All of these are made by me in my studio, which is where we are right now. There is a laser cutter over here. And anything I can draw, I can cut. So it's really great um, if you have an idea for something just email me and we'll see if what we can figure out. I have made a couple custom things for folks and it's turned out really well. So I'm gonna turn on a second camera. It's gonna show up over here and that will give us a little bit of a close up of some of these tools. So the first things I have, these are the most popular ones. I have to restock these pretty often, but they're always in the shop. These are kind of a multi-tool and the multi-tools are 15 and it has a gauge hole in this two inch gauge hole it has a ruler down both sides in inches and centimeters it has all your needles from 0 to 15 and it has a wraps per inch tool on the bottom they are nice sturdy wood they're not going to break unless you really try to do it like like I mean like take a sledgehammer or your car to them this is one of the custom ones I was talking about I had someone email me and ask for a spinners gauge 
but she wanted the Diz on the middle. So this has your spinner gauge on it, wraps per inch, and a fiber Diz. And then this is the one that it started as. It was a spinner's gauge. Um, these can also be used by knitters to figure out the weight of a yarn that you lost the ball band on. So they're multi-purpose, not just for spinners. There is a twist angle and the wraps per inch as well. These are both 15. They're always in the shop. Um, I do carry both all the time. And then on the smaller side, this one is 11. It is it has the, the recess. So all of these little indentations here, I don't know if you can see, they are recessed. So you can actually lay your yarn down in them to help you decide. And when you do it, you're going to do it with like very little tension on your yarn to get like an accurate measurement of your yarn. So this is just a smaller size and it also has the wraps per inch window. So these are 11. They all come with a ball chain for this top corner up here. Sometimes it's a sheep and that just gives you a spot to hang them when you're not using them. Then I have swatch gauges, little swatch windows in a couple different sizes. So I have them as a one inch, little on the go. Now the window is one inch, the outside is two inches. So it's kind of a swatch and a ruler all in one. These are, these are actually six on Etsy. I printed this a long time ago and I never fixed it. So these are six. Then I have a two inch size one. So this window is two inches. Those are eight. Now the edge is kind of useful if you just want it as a ruler and don't want to cover up your whole swatch. So it's two inches and two and a half inches here, but it's four inches on the outside portion. Those are 10. And then your, your most average four inch gauge swatch where the inside is four inches. Now the centimeters is over nine and a half because centimeters are a little bit larger than the inches in terms of numbers, but the window itself is measured to four inches. So those are the gauges. Um, run through some of these real quick. These are just wraps per inch and gauge tools. I have them in a whole bunch of different patterns. They have your needles and a ruler. There's a dragonfly. These are all 10. There's a sheep and a goat and a ladybug. There's a couple more in the shop. And then there's also wraps per inch ones in different animals and a butterfly. Those are the only two I have here with me. There are dragonflies and ladybugs in all of those as well. So all those come with their ball chain so that you can hang them up. Let's see. Next up in tools is sock rulers. Have them in 10 inches and 12 inches, two different sizes. They have your sock size needle gauge on them, a swatch window, and from end to end is their measurement. And they have it in centimeters and inches. So when you're knitting, the way you use these, if you've never used one before, is if you're knitting from like cuff down and you want to measure say you want to get to a five inch let me do this in the camera five inch before you turn your heel you're going to knit until you're actually two five inches where there's your cuff and this would be five inches then you'll turn your heel same way if you're doing toe up you'll knit your toe slide it onto your sock ruler until you get to your measurement of your foot six eight seven inches however many inches it is and then turn your heel It'll keep you consistent if you're not knitting for yourself. Uh, it keeps me consistent um, just because I like to measure things and make sure that I'm the same. The great thing about these is they are unfinished wood. You can actually write on the back of these and they're 18 and 22. You can write on the back. You can write uh, sock sizes, average size of the, the people that you generally knit socks for if it's not just yourself. Some other things I have are my mini tools. Now the mini tools are eight. I have these in a bunch. There's Kitchener, just simple directions. There's a fiber Diz, 
twist angle. There's cotton as a gauge. And this is, these are really great if you have a reminder that you would like to see. Just email me. I can make one of these. Make one left, make one right. Wraps per inch. They're about two and a half inches square. They're $8 a piece. That way you can buy just one or get the whole collection. Uh, other little guys I have, and I just have a couple minutes here left, are bag tags. You can write on these with a ballpoint pen. Uh, let's see, stitch counters. So when you're casting on hundreds and hundreds of stitches for something, those are 10. And they're little light bulb markers. You just slide them on and off. Let's see, front and back markers, a sheep, sheep head and a sheep butt, just to mark the front and the back of your work. Those are six. I have sweater stitch markers. Now these are a whole set of make one left, make one right, slip slip knit. I also just started making a mini set. If you're doing, these are really great for um, DK worsted bulky sweaters. These ones, and I'm gonna list these today, are really, they're like up to the, sorry, bleh, the hole on them, the ring on them, is probably good to size seven needle. I'll double check that before I list it and I'll make sure it's in the description. But they're just, they're half the size of the other ones. So this was a suggestion from a customer and it was a really good suggestion because you don't want giant dangly ones on maybe a lace weight project or like a mohair sweater. So these are just smaller and the dimensions of these will be in the shop. They will be uh, 10. Those are sweater markers. And one of the last things I'm going to have time for today is I just started making these. They're little uh, zipper pulls or keychains, and they are a simple gauge and a two and a half inch ruler. These are going to be eight, and they're just a cute little on the go tool. So those are some of the tools. There are a couple more notions and tools in the shop that you can check out there. Uh, there's stitchable ornaments. Oh, I actually have one right in front of me. Stitchable ornaments, really great little gift for the knitters in your life that maybe you don't want to buy yarn for. Those are 12, and there's a couple different of them in the shop. But I'm running out of time, and I need to make sure I have time to upload this and get it on the way so this rainstorm doesn't interfere with everything. Uh, up next, for me, let me find my little graphic. Hang on. I have up two upcoming events. Shenandoah Valley Fiber Fest is actually this weekend. It starts today as well. The marketplace opens at 9 a.m. They decided to go virtual since we can't be in Berryville together. And it's being hosted on Eventini and Facebook. You can also shop with all the vendors on their own uh, web pages. So that's this weekend uh, in between Wafa sales. You can go check that out. And there's also a missing SAF page. So the vendors of Southeastern Animal Fiber Fair uh, have gotten together and we've made our Facebook page. It is called Missing SAF. We will have a live event from the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. And lots of vendors will be there going live to share with you what they would have had at SAF this um, October. We're going to miss that event. It's always such a great event down in Asheville. So if you're not from the East Coast and have never got to come to SAF, it's a good way to experience some of the vendors you would have seen there. Uh, WAFA will be all weekend. I am lucky enough to have been first for the entire weekend. It is the earliest I have been. So I hope you all enjoy having a great three-day event on watching all the great vendors. There are a couple of people that I'm looking forward to seeing as well. Uh, please be kind and be patient. Uh, there's a quite a big storm. I'm in Virginia, Southwest Virginia. We have a huge storm right now. So you might find that some vendors are having trouble with their internet. So just be patient and I hope you all enjoy the weekend. Thank you so much and we'll see you again.